Stitch Mania plans have happened. I've put everything together. Um, I'm waiting on a couple pieces of fabric still, but this is basically it. So, my day one. My day one is going to be this Alessandra Adelaide Christmas Ball 2010 design. It's meant to be stitched in red and green. And um, there's going to be a bit of rattling because I've got everything in bags. But Instead of using DMC, I've decided I'm going to go for these Weeks Dye Works. I just bought what they had. Chances are the red won't quite be enough, but we'll see. Um, so I've got Louisiana hot sauce for the red. And then, let's see if I can bring it a bit closer. And then a hunter for the green. And there are beads for this as well, but I don't have those in the bag. I'm going to stitch this on a regular old white linen that I had handy. Um, I've gridded it up because there's a fair bit of jumping around and it's a small, so there we go, it's a small um, count. Not exactly sure what it is, but small enough that I felt I needed to grid. I should mention that this pattern was uh, a gift to me. I helped, I can't remember her name now, but there was someone on, um, I think it was Stitch Mania, who needed a little bit of translation um, for a swap she was participating in. And so I helped her out with that. And it really wasn't a lot of work at all on my part. It was, but um, she gifted me this, this chart as a thank you. So, so that was really unexpected and kind, I thought. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is a kit that I bought. I liked this kit for a while. I had it on my waiting list. One, two, three, stitch. Sorry for the rattling. There's a bit of stickiness going on here. There we go. So the kit is the uh, Dimensions Kit Be a Light into the World. Um, that kind of works really well with our school leadership theme and so I wanted to stitch that up. I'm going to zoom in a bit. My camera stand is not very steady so I'm sorry for any wiggles you might get. There we go. Um, shadow the glare away. So there it is. What I did was I gridded the dark blue fabric with a green sulky sliver just to make the stitching faster and because I was excited about Stitch Mania but I didn't want to start too early. <laughs> So that's what that was all about. Uh, my third day. Uh, a while ago now, I bought these Christmas books. Uh, there's a bunch in the series. It's a leisure arts publication. And um, I've seen the Nora Corbett reindeer. And I thought that would be fun to do. But then I saw this one and it was a bit more my style. So I bought this whack load of fabric. It's a 32 count lamb's wool jobelin over, and I'll be stitching over two. Um, it's huge. I mean, you, you can't really see on the screen, but what I did was I gridded one reindeer's worth <laughs> of um, fabric. And if you give me a second, I will open the book to a page where you can see the picture and not there's the beautiful lamb's wool again so you've got something to look at um let's see they are it's called r is for reindeer and of course i'm not seeing the page number right now but oh here it is there's the chart sorry i'm gonna flip the pages back and forth a bit here they've got there we go so uh, let me just adjust the light, get the glare away. There we go. Um, so there's the chart. And I've decided I would like eventually to stitch the sleigh plus enough reindeer that I can have Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, and a Rudolph. So nine reindeer. Because, you know, why go small when you can go big? <laughs> so that'll be my third mania start. Um, that uses a uses a Krennic. We've got in there a 002 blending filament. And um, 
the lady at the store. I went to Sheena's Needlework Gallery in Winnipeg. Um, she helped me figure out how to set everything up so that I'd have enough room. And the reason I'm doing it on this massive piece of fabric is that I can save, um, I can save fabric by stitching it all in one piece. Um, I don't need to leave enough for framing. I'll be sewing at a fairly narrow margin. So I just had to have enough that I can manipulate a, um, a frame, a, a Q-snap type thing. Okay, while I'm putting that away, I'll give you this to look at. <laughs> That's my number four um, number four Stitch Mania. I bought this chart probably at least a year ago. It's the Robin Hood Clouds Factory, which I fully expect to have a ton of fun with and have trouble putting down um, at the end of the day. So it's Robin Hood based on the old Disney animated movie. And you've got all the characters there. Maid Marian, the nurse, um, Prince, is that Prince John? Uh, the snake, the troubadour, there's a bunch of different characters there. Friar John, Friar Tuck, sorry. And um, I'm gonna stitch this on this fabric. It's a 28 count gold digger fabric by Rolanda Snyder. She's a hand dyer in Canada. Now, if I turn the light away, oh, it's a bit washed out. This fabric, um, maybe if I put something white beside it, it'll behave. This fabric is a um, sort of a parchment gold tones fabric. Hmm, there's a yellow yellow. Does that change it up? Nope. So you'll just have to take my word for it. It's a parchment uh, gold tones, like a brownish yellow. I normally shy away from yellow, just personal taste, but I really liked this. And <laughs> I know not everyone's a fan of gridding, but I have to say, the last time I did a Clouds Factory, I had problems with, you know, I'd stitch and stitch and stitch, and then I'd discover that one of these characters was, you know, a stitch or two out of alignment. So I hope to avoid that problem. Um, but yeah, I have, I can highly recommend Rolanda's fabrics. She generally, generally sells them for 20 bucks a piece. It, it was bigger than this piece. There's more to it than that. All right, next step. I have wanted to stitch a Christmas stocking for a long time. And so there's this called Bygone Days Stocking. It's from this Donna Cooler collection book. I have another one of these as well, and she's got a whole bunch of stockings, Christmas stockings, in a variety of styles. So there's kind of like cute and fun, and then more old-fashioned. The one that I'm going for is a bit more of an old-fashioned one. Um, as you could guess from the title, Days Gone By. And... Almost have the... Okay. I'll cover up the alphabet chart here. So there's what it's intended to look like eventually. I chose this fabric. Um, I'm not sure what I had it left over from. Hmm, can't remember now. Anyways, I think it's a linen. It's got some of the slubs in there. It's all gridded up, ready to go. And. Again, I didn't leave a huge border because I, I'll be sewing the edge and all I need for that is, you know, quarter inch, half inch kind of thing. And I went with this um, blue-gray because I figured it would, um, it would match the snow tones fairly well. Um, that was my thought anyways on that one. So I'll get a start on that. And then... The next one, I don't have fabric for this one yet. I've got a shipment coming from Rolanda, but this is my first soda stitch. And there it is, the chart. I'll be stitching Little Red Riding Hood. And I want to put her on a light green fabric, sort of like you could see in this image here. 
um, just for fun. I, I wanted, I've seen these charts, I've seen different people on floss tube stitch them, and I thought it would be fun to try one. Um, my, my theme for Stitch Mania this year was, for the most part, to try uh, new designers. Um, not entirely, but that was cut. So the Alessandra Adelaide and this one, Soda Stitch, a few different ones. Stitch Rovia. Now, <laughs> that is a, not the best image ever, but I want to stitch her wonderful world. And I'm going to put it on this um, it's a 28 count solo a fabric by Rolanda Snyder again. And this is not too bad, this image here. You're getting the, the mottled blue effect quite nicely. So I ran out of needles when I was like, so I gritted and then when I'm done gritting, I put the needle. I know you're not supposed to because of fear of rust, but so far I haven't had a problem. Um, so I gritted it up a little bit unevenly as it turns out, but it should be fine. And um, yeah, what a wonderful world is going on that. There we go. If I remember correctly, the fabric block, the size was about double this. So I had some extra to use on a different project, which is nice. All right, perforated paper. So, cross stitcher, let's see, October 2016, the British magazine cross stitcher. Um, I'll just take it away to open up to the correct page. Page 17, 17, here we go. Oh, that's a different one. Let me think. Oh. Huh. Okay, I know what's going on. I've got two um, two separate things I want to be stitching here. So I'm going to stitch what I'm about to show you on this perforated paper. I've worked on perforated paper before, and I don't mind it. I know some people don't enjoy it, but it works for this design specifically quite well. And, oh, there's another one I'd like to do eventually, but it's not on the plans right now. Joy to all. This is Cross Stitcher, uh, October 2016. And, 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 I'm sorry. You know what it's like. There we go. It's a do not disturb. I'm planning on modifying the colors um, just as I go, kind of randomly. Just a fun little plaque ends up being it should be a fairly quick stitch I'll leave the magazine out because I have another piece that I'll be doing on that one in that out of that one I should say and here it is it's the home for Christmas and here is that blue gray linen again and it's a bit of a sampler style piece um, I think and it's here on the cover so I don't have to flip pages around to show you but there we go that is the piece I might need to change the color of this this blue edging here I'm thinking that might sort of disappear on the fabric but that's not a big deal I could make it white I can make it red there's a bunch of colors here a lighter blue I, there's a bunch to choose from so I'm not too concerned about that but there's that one I don't really know if I have a specific purpose in mind. I just, I use the Stitch Mania thing as an opportunity to just start designs that I like and I'll figure out what to do with them eventually. I got so many running that chances are um, I'll have a lot of time <laughs> to figure that out. So, all right, just trying to not lose my organization here. Um, Next piece, also from a magazine, also from a cross stitcher magazine. There, can get to look at the one I want to do is this little one. I'll show you a bigger picture. It's called Sleigh Bells Ring, and I'm going to stitch it on this piece of picture, this plus fabric that I've had for about a year. It's a 28 count Lugana Crystal Mirage, 
this stuff is a pain to grid, let me tell you. There's a bunch here that I can cut off, but I want to stitch it first, and then I might have a little extra for ornaments or something. But it's it, yeah, you can see it quite well actually. It's definitely an opalescent. And the image that's gonna go on it is a Santa flying over a sort of old world type city or town. To me, it looks almost like a medieval, medieval town. Here we go. So I'm hoping that the dark fabric will make it look like he's um, traveling in the night sky. And I may choose to turn the these gold bits, uh, stars, I, may, I might choose to make them white. I'm not sure how the gold will look on this fabric. It's a, it's a fairly dark gray with blue tones, which I'm hoping will go well with the blues in the buildings. So we'll see. And I'll need to do something about his eyes. They're French knots there, and I find them a little bit awkward looking. So we'll see. Maybe just a one-stranded French knot or something of that nature. So I'm whipping through these just because it's not like I'm actually showing you stitching right now. So that was my number 10 Stitch Mania start. And I am planning, currently I'm planning 14. If I can come up with a 15th that is, um, that doesn't involve buying more stuff, I will do that. Next one. The next one is, hmm, it's called Christmas Mood. This is from an Etsy designer called Irina Weber. I printed out, this is a black and white copy, but it's in Christmas colors, so reds and greens and that type of thing. And I just gridded up. This is a very small count, Ada. Um, huh. So I, I gridded it up, it'll be a small, there's my hand for reference, smallish design. I'll stitch it over one. But I was kind of debating with myself I'm going to need to zoom in to show this to you properly. I was debating with myself um, how many threads I'll want to use just because there we go. Um, just because I've stitched on this before and stitching two over one tends to get bulky and squished real fast. So this top one was a test two over two. The middle was a one, sorry, two over one. So two threads on the bottom and top leg. This middle bit here was a test of one for each leg of the cross stitch. The bottom, I did one thread, the bottom leg of the cross stitch and two the top. And I like the look of that the best. The problem is that it's um, a pain to stitch quite frankly. Um, I kind of asked the folks on Stitch Mania what they thought and someone suggested just tightening up my tension um, when I use two threads for both legs. So I might try that. But yeah, check her out. Um, she, Elena Weber had posted a, a picture of her work on Stitch Mania and I asked her where she got the pattern. She said, oh, I designed it myself. I said, do you, you know, and then I was gonna go to her store and order and she's like, oh no, well, here, I'll, I'll send you a link for free. Um, so I'm almost finished that design and, but I did, I thought, you know, I, I, I wanna support her. That was really kind. And so I purchased that pattern that I liked. Okay, the last one. I love watching everybody's Nora Corbett's and Mirabilia's on Floss Tube, but a lot of them are designs that I, while I really appreciate the beauty, I don't really think I want to stitch them. Um, not my style as far as decor goes. But I saw this one and I love the subdued colors. <laughs> it's subdued enough that one of my nieces looked at it and said, well, Tanta, it's, it doesn't have enough pink and purple. It doesn't have any pink and purple, but she's trying to be diplomatic. 
but um but I really like this design there's a few beads that come with her sort of an olive green and then a more tealy or brighter green um, and then this uh, champagne color bead that it's hard to see there but and I'm gonna stitch it on this fabric which I bought at Sheena's it is do I know what kind of fabric it is I should know but I don't currently it is a linen um, it's a light green with blue tones linen and she's gonna go on there there's also a couple of credits that come with her and I like that they're kind of it's not gold and silver um, there's this very light sea blue is what I would call it that's not the technical name and then this core that's it's a bit thicker this black and silver um, so you've got a 019 very fine braid number four and three two one four number four braid is that what that is sorry if i'm getting the numbers wrong but there's the there you go so those are my plans for stitch mania um i'm looking forward to seeing other people's plans and um still need to make a few working copies and um settle out a fabric or two but there we've got it Right. thanks for watching if you want to you can like and subscribe and hands I even have a hand note it's hard to see but it says something about oh leave at seven I was working in Winnipeg yesterday so I had to leave fairly early to be there on time <laughs> so thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to posting my progress when Stitch Mania is done. Take care, everybody. See you next time.